What's up everybody, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to discuss how you can speed up your editing workflow using Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets. So this video is a follow-up to a previous video I did titled High-End HDR Real Estate Photo Editing. And in that video, I showed my process for editing high-end HDR real estate photography. And I mentioned in that video how you can speed up the process by using Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets. And that's exactly what we're gonna be getting into in this video. If you haven't seen that video already, I will link to it up on the screen now. And I suggest watching that first because it outlines the process without using any of the actions or presets. So if you're unfamiliar, using actions and presets takes repetitive multi-step actions that you may perform on every single image that you're editing and executes them in a single click of a button instead of multiple steps that may take up a significant amount of time. For instance, I timed how long it takes to perform these tasks without using actions and presets and it came in at around 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So say you did a shoot that was 30 images total, that would save you somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour and 10 minutes of your precious time for an entire editing session, and that's notable. I'm also making these actions and presets that I use available for download on my website in order to help you with your own editing, and you'll also find the sample image in there that we'll be working on in this video tutorial in case you want to follow along and try it out as you watch this video. You'll find the link to it down in the description below. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom. I've imported the image in here. You see I have five brackets that I shot two stops apart. These are JPEG images. Shoot raw if you want, but I use JPEGs. They work perfectly fine for my purposes. Now that we have them in Lightroom, I made a collection. I would normally make a collection of all my photos for the entire shoot. So I'm just going to select all five of these and I'm going to control click, right click, uh, and I'm gonna go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right guys, so here we are in Photoshop and you can see our images have loaded as layers here in our layers panel. And here we have our actions panel, which is what we're gonna be discussing a lot in this video. And if you don't see your actions panel, you just have to go to window up here and go to actions and it will pop up for you. And here we have uh, all my HDR real estate photography actions that I use. And the first thing I do before anything else is I select all my layers and I'm gonna to go to my first action here, which is auto align layers. And to initiate an action, all you have to do is press the play button here and that will initiate it. Instead of going through the menu to do this, again, this just saves you time. So auto aligning your layers just makes sure that all your brackets are lined up correctly in case there was any shake in between shots or anything like that. So now our layers are aligned. You can see there's a little fringe here and everything because it, it just straightened everything out just a little bit. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that for right now. So now next, what I typically do is I blend the third layer with the first layer. So I'm just gonna move this layer up to the top and I have a action here called initial blend. So what that's doing is making a mask and filling it with a certain transparency that I use to just do an initial blend between these two images. So with my top layer selected, I'm gonna make sure my initial blend action is selected. I'm gonna hit the play button. So as you see, it added a layer mask with this grayish color that's you know sort of an opacity. It's not a full black or full white mask. It's just slightly uh, blending these two together a little bit. And that's my starting point for blending. And next thing I wanna do is just select my brush I wanna make sure I have white as my foreground color. And I want a soft brush, soft round brush, uh, somewhere around like 25% and opacity 100%, but I'm gonna have my flow down to 5%, really low flow. And I'm just gonna go here and you know bright, brighten up any areas that I feel need to be blended in a little bit better. So that's essentially good. I wanna brighten some more of this area up here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this super bright layer on the bottom, I'm gonna drag that up to the top. So if you just select add black layer mask and hit play, that will add a mask and hide it. Over here it's really dark, so I'm just gonna give this a little bit more, bring out these flowers a little bit. Any areas that I feel still a little dark under the table here. All right, I'm pretty happy with this blend. Next, I'm going to select these top three layers since these are all blended now. 
and I'm just gonna merge them down to one layer. I have an action for that too. I'll just select to merge layers and hit play. And that will merge my layers down to one layer. And the next thing we do is do some color correcting. So I wanna color correct my whites and make them look white. Right now they look uh, yellowy, orangey, dingy looking. So we don't want that. So I have a action for that right here. It's called duplicate, desaturate, curves, and make a mask. And this is probably the biggest time saver. We're talking about four, four tasks here that take time to do. So what it's gonna do is duplicate this layer, desaturate it, add a curves adjustment, and make a mask, a layer mask and hide it. So it's, you know, many steps here in one, and this is a huge time saver. So this is where, you know, these actions really help you save time and why they're really helpful for your editing workflow. Now hit play on that and let that run its course. Boom, instantly we have a desaturated layer with a hidden layer mask here. So just to see, you know, that's what the layer, desaturated layer looks like underneath. So you can see our whites are all white here. Make sure my layer mask here is selected. Make sure I have white as my background color. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna hit L for my polygonal lasso tool up here. And I'm just gonna cut out my whites here. And you know, this is still a time consuming sort of a uh, task here. Can't really do much about that as far as a Photoshop action because you have to manually go through and select the areas you want to select, but you know, that's okay. All right, so now you can see we have a large portion of our whites selected here. We still have some more to deal with over here, but now I have another action here called Feather Selection and Cut. So what this is gonna do is just cut this all out so we see the desaturated layer underneath and also feather it by one pixel. So, you know, it's kind of two steps in one, again, saving some time by using this action. So just one click of the button, boom. So now we got white. All this is white now, looking good. We just have a couple things to deal with here. I'm just gonna take my brush, make it smaller. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna bring my hardness up to like 95. And I'm gonna bring my flow up to 100%. And I'm just gonna paint black here on some of these things I cut out. Let's see, I'm just getting the gold back in this doorknob here. Real quick. So these hinges. here with this guy. Alright, we cut some of this flower off here, so we want to get this back in. Alright, so we painted all in those areas that we cut off, so now we just have to deal with more of this white area over here, so I'm just going to use a brush here. Could also use the lasso tool again, whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so,
All right, so there we have all our whites now in. So we got nice white whites. So now we can select these two layers and we're just gonna merge them down. So we can select merge layers here, play. Now we have those merged. And now we're gonna deal with our window and we're gonna uh, mask that in. So we have these two darker layers here. Um, we have this one and then this really dark one. This dark one is too dark. I, this will suffice, I think, uh, for the window. So again, I'm just gonna use the add black layer mask uh, action here, hit play. And now we have a black layer mask here. This one down here, it'll be easier probably if I just paint it in. So I'm gonna make sure white is my foreground color for this actually, so. All right, so we have the door windows in now. Now we just need to take care of this uh, big top window here. And I'm gonna hit L for my polygonal lasso tool. Make sure white is our background color. And I'm just gonna zoom in here and cut this window out. So now with this mask selected, I'm going to go to feather selection and cut action. Boom, that just cut in our window. So all we have left to do now is to paint in or mask in these little cross beams here. And so I'm just gonna use my brush here and start on that now. Okay, so now we have all our crossbars of our window masked in. This image is looking great. We have our windows in, we have all our whites, white, and our blend together. So we're done here now in Photoshop. So finally, all I'm gonna do now is select all these layers. Then I'm gonna go to the merge down and save uh, action here and just hit play. So that'll merge all these down and save the document. And it will pull it right over back into Lightroom and we'll pop over there and finish this off. Hi guys, so here we have our image in Lightroom. And now, with the preset I have, I go to Presets and User Presets. I have my HDR finishing preset and I'm just gonna click on this, double click on this. So you can see before and after. So what this is doing is, you know, it's just giving this a boost here. And you're gonna have to tweak this a little bit more to taste, but it's just, you know, bringing down the highlights a little bit, raising the shadows, raising up the clarity a little bit, adding sharpening and correcting vert your verticals. So make sure everything is straight. And that also took care of the fringing around the edge from when we uh, auto aligned our layers before. So that's taken care of. And I might just add a little bit of exposure to here. Just a little bit. All right, and that's really it for Lightroom. It's just applying the preset and tweaking it if need be. And it's quick and easy, it's that fast. You know, it really speeds things up, not having to tweak every little parameter. So we're just gonna export this out and have a look and that'll be that.
All right guys, so I really hope you found this video helpful in seeing how Photoshop actions and a Lightroom preset can really help speed up your editing workflow and save you a lot of time in the long run. Again, these actions and preset are available for download on my website. Please see the link down in the description below. All right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps the channel grow and I really appreciate your support. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, please see the links down in the description below as well. Thanks so much again for watching guys and I'll see you again on the next one.